everyone and thank you all for coming for today's video for Shardy or Keep It, where I'll be reviewing all types of weapons and perks and seeing how effectively good they are. Today, I'll be looking into the new pinnacle PvP scout rifle called Vandy's Throw Knife, which is a kinetic 260 RPM rapid fire frame and one of the first unique ones of its kind compared to any other scout rifle introduced. To get the scout rifle, you will need to complete the Field of View PvP quest from Shax, which will require you to get 140,000 enemies defeated and medals, 21,000 glory points earned, and 450 scout rifle final kills. The best way to speed this progress up is to take part in Monumentum Control in the PvP playlist once it's active, and use a 150 RPM scout rifle like Jade Rabbit to get your kills, as 150 RPMs can one shot upon headshots in this game mode, and only in this game mode. The scout rifle fires fast, accurately, and can completely dominate at mid to long ranges with its perfectly synchronized perks. But compared to the Black Scorpion of the same RPM, there are a few issues with the weapon and weapon frame in general that I have noticed from playing around with it. Nothing too severe, but something you should be fully aware of before using it. Also in this review, I won't go over the random rolls for the weapon as it's only a static roll, but I will of course cover how it plays in both PvE and PvP, and add in as much nitty bit bits of information for you guys to be fully aware of before using it. The weapon currently rolls with a fluted barrel, extended mag, rapid hit and snapshot sights, zen movement and kill clip, and a ranged masterwork. So a few things to know about the weapon. Firstly, Randy's Throwing Knife is the only 260 RPM Kinect frame to ever be released in Destiny 2, making it a unique variant of the weapon category and something worth grinding for simply for collectors or PvP players. Although we do have the Black Scorpion for SR, which is in the same category as Randy's, the Black Scorpion is only an energy version. With Randy's being in the Kinect spot, this frees up our secondary spot for anything ranging from a SMG, sidearm or shotgun usage in PvP or PvE. It's best you pair this weapon up with a shotgun or sidearm for close quarters and encounters, as you already got the mid to long range engagements covered. Secondly, with it being the only 260 RPM connected to be released to date, it's also the only 260 frame to be able to roll rapid hit, snapshot and kill clip, with Black Scorpion only being able to roll them moment. This makes the weapon not only versatile in this area, but it provides improvements to the weapon's already low reload, handling and stability thanks to these perks alone. And funnily enough, these perks work extremely well in both PvP and PvE, so it's a total win win with no downsides. Its stats now are bad at first glance, with nearly everything except from its aim assist and stability being below the average what we want. However, this is actually quite normal for this frame type and not something you have to worry about, as with its volume perks available, it actually rectifies most of the issues for the weapon, which, once again, is great for all content you use it in. Rapid Hit, for example, allows us to increase our accuracy and reload speed up to times 5 upon precision hits, and is easily achievable for both PvE and PvP, as we do have 20 in the magazine. This perk will rectify our low reload speed and stability and practically make Durandi a much more easier to control weapon. We then have Snapshot Sights, which will provide a large boost to our ADS time, but compared to Rapid Hits, I would have to say Rapid Hit wins this one, with its more better usage all around. Although when paired with Zen Moment, I can definitely see it having a place as well. Next we have Zen Moment in the final slot, which provides a boost for stability upon landing hits and actually stacks well with Rapid Fire. This overall will max out your stability and make it feel as if you're playing on the PC, with little to no recoil control, and I would say that I would be using this perk a lot more on the longer side of maps if I'm playing on PvP. However, in the end, Kill Clip is really what you're gonna go after, for the short but nice TDK push it provides. For both PvE and PvP, you won't turn this perk down, and simply, why would you? Unless you're focusing on making your shots as accurate as possible within the moment, then Kill Clip should be your final choice always. It does have a TDK of 0.93, which requires at least 3 critical hits and 2 bodies, which is okay. Not too bad, but not too good either. But with Kill Clip active, it will change that to a 0.70, and only need 2 crits and 2 body. So you can see why Kill Clip is a lot more better over Zen Moment, if it will be used in PvP and PvE as well. Its recoil also bounces to the right and steadily widens out from there, which isn't much of a problem as the first few hits are what's important. You could add in a counterbalance mod to it, but it will drift to the left instead, so entirely it's up to you as to what's best for you. Personally, I opted into using targeting adjuster or radar booster, as I know I can control the recoil kick and might be the same for others as well. Plus, activating rapid hit will also aid me with straightening my shots. In general, Randy has one of the best perk synchronizations to offer for a fast final scout rifle, as long as you land your shots. In PvE, that's pretty simple with perks such as Rabbit Hit and Kill Clip popping off over and over again, which will allow you to clean up ads here and there. And don't even need to back away from engaging your most fights, as it will basically keep up the monumentum over and over again. 
Saving goes for PvP, where you have the choice of using Rapid Hit and Kill Clip for fast and accurate kills, or Rapid Hit and Zen for better overall accuracy with no recoil applied. However, there is some issues with the weapon which once again isn't bad but not good either. Firstly, it's ammo. Now although the weapon frame states you have deeper ammo reserves, so you have basically more ammo stocked, you will burn through this ammo relatively quickly and you won't even realise it before it's too late. And I can tell you from personal experience that having this happen in PvP is one of the worst feelings to be put up against. Especially when you're on your team and basically you're on the other side of the map and you're in the enemy's team side of the spawn points. I cannot tell you how many times that's happened, I basically lost count. Because the weapon fires so quickly now, you'll need to land more shots compared to a lightweight or high impact frame. It means that ammo issue will be common for you, plus add in range with a damage reduction from longer distances and it can get much more worse out from there. Now to avoid this, it's best advised to at least have a secondary with a large magazine count or have the scout rifle scanjo mod to aid you. That's literally the only two choices you have there I'm afraid. Secondly, scouts at the moment are in a tough spot for uses in PvP. Now hear me out, although I did say it's great for mid to long range maps, you do have to think about how generally effective it will be against other said weapons that fit those ranges as well. For example, mid range fights are going to be dominated by pulse rifles, especially bygones or crimson users, which have faster TDK and less penalty, while longer range engagements will be dominated by jade rabbits or tans and eagle scouts with much stronger TDK than yours. Now you can see where the issue is, where does this weapon fit in? It does of course still fit in in its respective ranges and can still outdo players with these weapons at an impressive feat, but you will initially lose most of your gunfights against these players if you don't nab your first few shots, so just a heads up before using this weapon. So now let's move on to the PvP side of things, I'll let this clip play out and I'll be back in a sec, enjoy. Price. Okay this might be terrible, might be great, I'm hoping it's great, but I know exactly how it's going to end. Okay, that was a quick one. That means there's some right over there. Put that right there. Which means, yeah, put that right over there as well. Ah, oh, okay. What we'll think about that? Clean the scenes. And that's why we have fire team. Oh god. That shouldn't have happened. I'll quickly grab that. Okay, we go back, we go back. Just like here. I'm gonna say, yeah, teammate, you can do the push shot. I can't get that. Fought like a titan of the first pillar, and that's why we have fire teams. Did he get it? Oh no, he died. Oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen, but I just didn't know why I didn't engage. Which means one person is in here. Okay, you got me, you got that. And there's two people over there, but I can't engage them. Yeah, he's right there. Oh my god! <clears throat> Strength in numbers, Guardian. You see, you see this BS. You see this BS with gaming is merely like unbelievable. This is my life. I'm. I'm. I'm after I'm done, I'm so changing my sentinel class. I hate playing sentinel. It's great in PvE, but PvP is just terrible. And no one can change my mind on that. I'll oh, see it. would have been enough if I just managed to get it. I can't. I don't have no more super evil, so that's annoying. I'm not super bad, I don't have no more thing on me. Alright, I'll take that. How am I this bad? Oh god, I'm gonna die. 
I'm gonna die. Please don't. Please don't die. Okay, that's one issue that I should like. If I had my second jet, I could probably gone much more quicker. That's one issue. If I had my secondary, I would have got my score much more quicker. The fact that I could not get that quicker is simply because. Oh. Here you go. I could say, like, wait a second, he should be dead. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up, back up, back up, back up. Hey, why is that back there? Like no one got it. I know it's like only a point, but still, guys. I think I'll pop my super. Here. Oh, oh, you take them like they grow from trees. Dominating the field. Don't let up. Guys, please help me. Guys, please help me. Double down. One after you see what I mean by this game and it's just hit connection. I saw multiple times there I got the guy. It didn't connect. It did not count. It just makes no sense. Numbers, Guardian. Excellent. Five minutes remain. A strong start. She means one person to be chased. Rests our glory. Glory is yours. Now oh, someone popped in now. Oh, yeah, I can't. I can't push up. No one's there. Worst spot you could actually just do it to. Okay, we are in such a terrible spot right now. Just looking over here. Together as one. I love this right here. I'm gonna wait it out a bit. Nope, teammate's got nothing there. Two for one. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take it. Still, the game's hit retreation is so terrible. What? Yo, guys, like, look, this is your point. Look at that, we won it! Amazing! Actually, won something for once. Christ. Oh, there you go. Don't use Sentinel Tree class. It's terrible. Victory. I like you, Guardian. Twenty-eight. You don't try to be oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. So, general thoughts on the weapon. It performs great when it is a range, and as long as you land your shots via head and body, then your target won't have enough time to react at all. It doesn't hit like a truck, which is fine, as the RPM is what makes the weapon so unique. That and its synchronized perks is what will truly get you through to many of your battles. Now, don't be afraid to play aggressive with the weapon as well, as it does seem to fit that role well in its high paced engagements, as you keep pre firing down the line of sight against most players and it doesn't need to change or miss a beat when connecting. Remember, you have 20 rounds in the magazine, so don't be afraid to go a bit crazy with your shots, but at the same time, make sure your shots count because in the PvP, 
you can run out of ammo incredibly quickly without you even noticing. PvE, that's not much of a big problem though. Except now for his recoil, is his weapon worth getting? Well, yes, because it's a one of a kind scout that has just been released, and until now, this weapon's frame type has been left in the dark in terms of usage in general PvE and PvP play. It's not a meta breaking or comp tier weapon that will break the crucible upon being used, which is great for the many. And if you're solely a long to mid range player who enjoys scouts or, pu or pulses in general, then yes, you will absolutely love this weapon. If you're more of a close quarters person, then yeah, this won't be the weapon for you. In PvE, if you enjoy scouts in general or just looking to mix things up, then yes, once again, this is also a weapon that stacks up well and is definitely a weapon that will basically change a lot of things going for you. Randy's throw knife is one of those weapons that you should get if you have the time to invest in, or if you're looking for a new pace of things. It's excellent in its range and fires crazy when you get it going, and that's really all that matters for the weapon. It doesn't need this OP perk, it doesn't need to have this, you know, incredible amount of damage, it just needs to perform in a unique way. And as long as pinnacle weapons are going this route, then I wholeheartedly recommend that you actually go ahead and invest your time in getting it. It's really not that hard. Well, on a kind of a PvE to PvP side of things, if you're kind of an average player. But I do recommend still, whether you're an average or good player, still invest it and actually go get the Randy's Throne Knife. It really is a unique weapon. So that comes to the end of the weapon review video for today. Now, if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means leave a like and a sub. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.